In the next several videos, we're going to be talking about AWS CloudFormation. CloudFormation is a service that helps you model and set up your Amazon Web Services resources so that you can spend less time managing those resources and more time focusing on your application that runs in AWS. You create a template that describes all the AWS resources that you want, like Amazon EC2 instances or Amazon RDS database instances, and AWS CloudFormation takes care of provisioning and configuring those resources for you. You don't need to individually create and configure AWS resources and figure out what's dependent on what. CloudFormation will handle all of that for you. Let's take EC2 for example. For a scalable web application that also includes a back-end database, you might use an auto-scaling group, an elastic load balancing load balancer, and an Amazon Relational Database database instance. Normally, you might use each individual service to provision these resources, and after you create the resources, you would have to configure them to work together. All these tasks can add complexity and time before you even get your application up and running. Instead, you can create or modify an existing AWS CloudFormation template. A template describes all your resources and their properties. When you use that template to create an AWS CloudFormation stack, AWS CloudFormation provisions the auto-scaling group, load balancer, and database for you. After the stack has been successfully created, your AWS resources are up and running. You can delete the stack just as easily, which deletes all the resources in the stack. By using CloudFormation, you easily manage a collection of resources as a single unit. If your application requires additional availability, you might replicate it in multiple regions, so that if one region becomes unavailable, your users can still use your application in other regions. The challenge in replicating your application is that it also requires you to replicate your resources. Not only do you need to record all the resources that your application requires, but you must also provision and configure those resources in each region. When you use CloudFormation, you can reuse the same template to set up your resources consistently and repeatedly. Just describe your resources once and then provision the same resources over and over in multiple regions. In some cases, you might have underlying resources that you want to upgrade incrementally. For example, you might change to a higher performing instance type in your auto-scaling launch configuration so that you can reduce the maximum number of instances in your auto-scaling group. If problems occur after you complete the update, you might need to roll back your infrastructure to the original settings. To do this manually, you not only have to remember which resources were changed, you also have to know what the original settings were. When you provision your infrastructure with CloudFormation, however, the CloudFormation template describes exactly what resources are provisioned and their settings. Because these templates are text files, you simply track differences in your templates to track changes to your infrastructure, similar to the way developers control revisions to source code. Additionally, if you already have a stack of resources deployed using a CloudFormation template, you can simply edit the same stack, and CloudFormation will take care of updating any relevant resources for you. And that'll wrap it up for our quick introduction to CloudFormation. So if that makes sense, and if you're ready to get into more detail, feel free to move on. In this video, we're going to be talking about CloudFormation templates. A template is a declaration of the AWS resources that make up a stack. The template is stored as a text file whose format complies with either JSON or YAML standard. Because they're just text files, you can create and edit them in any text editor and manage them in your source control system with the rest of your source code. In a template, you declare your AWS resources that you want to create and configure. You declare an object as a name value pair or a pairing of a name with a set of child objects enclosed. The syntax depends on the format you use. The only required top level object is the resources object, which must declare at least one resource. The resources object contains a list of resource objects. A resource declaration contains the resources attributes, which are themselves declared as child objects. A resource must have a type attribute, which defines the kind of AWS resource you want to create. 
the type attribute has a specific format. And you'll see in the example here that we have a type of AWS EC2 instance, or AWS product identifier, and then resource type. In this case, if we were to deploy nothing else besides this resource, then CloudFormation would create an EC2 instance for us. Depending on the resource type, some properties are required, such as the image ID property for an EC2 instance. Some properties have default values, such as the access control property of an AWS S3 bucket resource, so specifying a value for those properties is optional. Other properties are not required, but may add functionality that you want, such as a website configuration property for an Amazon S3 bucket resource. Specifying a value for these properties is entirely optional and based on your needs. Next, let's take a look at parameter declarations and how you can restrict and validate user input. Here we have a parameters object with a few different parameters inside, namely key name, instance type, and SSH location. Both the instance type parameter and the SSH location parameter have a default field. For parameters with default values, CloudFormation uses the default values unless users specify another value when creating a stack. If you omit the default attribute, users are required to specify a value for that parameter. However, requiring the user to input a value does not ensure that the value is valid. To validate the value of a parameter, you can declare constraints or specify an AWS specific parameter type, like we've done for our key name. For AWS specific parameter types, CloudFormation validates input values against existing values in the user's AWS account and in the region where he or she is creating the stack before creating any stack resources. In this template, you'll notice that the key name has a type of AWS EC2 key pair key name. What that means is that anything the user inputs is going to be compared against any key names that exist in this user's account for the region they're trying to deploy this stack into. Parameters are a great way to enable users to specify unique or sensitive values for use in the properties of stack resources. However, there may be settings that are region dependent or somewhat complex for users to figure out because of other conditions or dependencies. In these cases, you would want to put some logic in the template itself so that users can specify simpler values or none at all in order to get the results that they want. For example, in this template, if we wanted to create an EC2 instance, we could simply hard code the AMI or image ID into the template. The problem with that is we know that AMIs are region specific. So if we try to deploy this template in any region besides the one we used an AMI ID for, it's not going to work. To avoid this problem, we need to specify the right AMI ID based on the conditional input. In this example, the region where the stack is created. There are two template features that can help, the mappings object and the AWS region pseudo parameter. The AWS region pseudo parameter is a value that AWS CloudFormation resolves as the region where the stack is created. Pseudo parameters are resolved by AWS CloudFormation when you create the stack. Mappings enable you to use an input value as a condition that determines other value. Similar to a switch statement, a mapping associates one set of values with another. Using the AWS region parameter together with a mapping, you can ensure that an Amazon machine image ID appropriate to the region is specified. In this example, let's check out a few different parts of the template. For the resource, in our EC2 instance declaration, we have an image ID and it's trying to perform a function called find in map. And it's looking specifically for a specific region. Now, if we go to our mappings value, there's our mappings object. Let's look for a regions sub object. And there we go. We have regions here. So what we're trying to do is find and map for this value, AWS region arc to AMI. So we've found this value. But next, it wants us to find the AWS region. And we just learned that the pseudo parameter AWS region is going to resolve for the correct region that we're in when we try to deploy the stack. So let's say we're in US East 1. If that's the case, this is going to resolve to US East 1. We find US East 1, 
and here are the values it provides. Next, it's going to try to find our instance type. And once again, it's going to look in mappings for the instance type, but it's going to refer to the instance type we chose as a parameter. So let's say for our instance type, we chose t1.micro. t1.micro maps to this value, which means if we go back down to our region and we map to that value, then the AMI we get is this one. In other words, we used a combination of pseudo parameters and the mappings function to find a specific AMI and use it to deploy our EC2 instance. And the last thing I'd like to talk about in this video is outputs. Outputs are simply ways to export different values from your CloudFormation stack when you instantiate it using a template. There are a few reasons you might want to do this. One is simply for organization and record keeping, but another is you can actually use the output of one CloudFormation stack when instantiating another stack. So you can see how outputs can help you organize and integrate your CloudFormation stacks. For example, one output is instance ID, and the output is going to include a description, and then for the value, it's going to refer to our EC2 instance. Our EC2 instance is up here, and it's going to give us the instance ID of the instance that's created for us. Another thing to bear in mind is another pseudo function called getAttribute. For example, we have an output called AZ. The description is the availability zone of the newly created instance, and then for the value, we're calling the pseudo function getAttribute. When you call the getAttribute pseudo function, you give it two parameters. First, is the resource that you want to grab an attribute from, and the second is the attribute you want to get. So in this case, for the output of availability zone, we're grabbing the EC2 instances availability zone. And that'll wrap it up for our summary of CloudFormation templates. So if all of that makes sense, feel free to move on.